The reason why this is important to you is that when your guests are engaged in the chat, when that chat is well moderated and on topic, your guests will stay with you longer in the virtual event. And when your guests stay with you longer in that virtual event, more of them see your offer. And when more of them see your offer, more of them will buy your offer, okay? So this is a profitability tip. How are entrepreneurs like us daring bravely to build a stage, ditch the sweatpants, and step up to the mic? How do we create our own transformative events so we can get our message out into the world in a bigger way that's not only profitable, but it's actually something we can be proud of? That's the question. And the answers are inside this podcast. My name is Sarah Pfeiffer. Welcome to Green Room Central. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Green Room Central podcast. And today we're talking advanced chat moderation strategies. Now, I want you to catch that I just said the word advanced. And so today really is a build on episode 24, where we talked about kind of the the basics to chat moderation. So if you haven't already listened to that episode, I want you to go back after you listen to this one today, and I want you to listen to episode 24. It's called Chat Moderation, What You Need to Know. And that's where we cover the table stakes, the things that I think are just basic and everybody should be doing no matter what. That's stuff like welcoming guests by name, recapping key points with emojis. Emojis is the (laughs) the key there. It's cheering people on the the highly engaged guests, it's sharing presenter bios, and it's dropping all the links. So go back to episode 24 on chat moderation, what you need to know. But today, today we're talking advanced chat moderation strategies here in episode 52. And we'll get into it. The first one that I want you to know and This, again, this is not for you, the host of the event, to be taken care of. This is for you to assign to a team member who you've given the job of moderating the chat. Please hear me well. This is not for you, the presenter, to do. It's not possible to be present and presenting and at the same time in the chat and moderating that and reading what's coming in. It's not your job it's your team member's job, okay? And thank goodness for the the world of virtual events, that person can be located anywhere. They don't have to be sitting next to you, but they can, but uh, you can. they can be located anywhere in the world and just logged in live for your virtual event. But these these tips I'm gonna give you are gonna level, level up your, your chat moderation that much more. And the reason why this is important to you is that when your guests are engaged in the chat, when that chat is well moderated and on topic, your guests will stay with you longer in the virtual event. And when your guests stay with you longer in that virtual event, more of them see your offer. And when more of them see your offer, more of them will buy your offer. Okay, so this is a profitability tip, getting the chat right. So don't think that this isn't for you. (laughs) It it is. It, It directly correlates to how engaged your guests are and engagement directly correlates to how many people hear your offer and buy your offer. Okay, so this is important for everybody. First one is I... I think I'm such a stickler for being on brand that this one is just like, I feel like a soapbox item for me, but I want you to personalize and brand your chat moderators. So what does that mean? First, I want you to have all of your chat moderators change their Zoom name. So anybody from your team who is acting as a chat moderator on behalf of your business, I want you to have them use their first name And then, so I'm going to use me as the example. If I'm the chat moderator, I'm going to say Sarah, and then I'm going to put a dash, and then I'm going to put 
the name of the business. So if it was my event, I would have everyone identify them as part of Team Sarah. So it would be like Cliff dash Team Sarah. It would be like J dash Team Sarah. Do you follow? So come up with your business name and then have everyone do their name dash the business name. It really helps guests put a name with a face and personalize personalizes and humanizes the brand. I really don't like when brands, so let's say it's a personal brand. Let's say, uh, again, let's use my event as, as the example. Let's say it's it's an event put on by uh, Sarah Pfeiffer and then you go and have all of your I don't like it when brands have their team members log in as them them and don't change their name. And so then I'm speaking on on stage. And then at the same time, my name is commenting in the chat. Well, everyone knows it's not me. So why is that the name, my name? It, it just, it it almost feels like we're hiding something. And I, I don't like that. I really think it looks so pro team to have the person's name and and then a dash and then your brand name. The next thing I want done, and, and this doesn't take much time to look that next level of polished and professional and and kind of like put together is changing, having everyone who's, uh, anyone from your team who's acting as a chat moderator, who's already changed their Zoom name, I want them to also change their Zoom profile picture. And I want them, I want you to provide someone from your team, go and provide an image to each of them so they all use the exact same one. And what I want, want it to be is a solid color square that is reflective of your brand colors. So pick the most prominent color in your brand. In my case, it would be a navy. And then two letters go on top of that. And or one or two characters, there's really just not much more to visually be able to see more than that. But for me, it would be like a blue with a, a white SF. And and provide that to everyone who is a chat moderator so that it also is visually eye-catching every time and noticeable every time someone from your team is in the chat. It just kind of levels up their authority and again, brands the experience. So those two things are so important. That's number one. The second thing is being prepared with rules of the road. And this one's going to take a little bit more preparation. And I think it's worth it. It's like well-oiled chat moderation is about preparing in advance for what you know is coming. And having stuff pre-written in a, in a Google Doc that can be copied and pasted into the chat by all of your chat moderators so that the message stays consistent and clear and on brand. And so when we're talking about, and and this works, you know, for links, we covered it back in that basics episode 24, but to take it to the next, and, you know, we talked about pre-writing speaker bios and pre-writing key points that you're going to drop throughout presentations. We covered all of that in that basics episode 24. But to take that to the next level, what you can pre-write is the following. I'm going to give you a a few prompts that will be extremely helpful to eliminate questions and confusion and too much unnecessary chatter in the chat that can derail us from like staying on track. And it's, it's what, what are the rules of the road or the how-tos when it comes to first a uh, workbook and journaling. So if you're going to call for people to fill out something in their workbook that was provided uh, when they signed up for the event or journal on something, what I want you to have pre-written 
so that all of your chat moderators can just copy paste is where do I find that <laughs> digital workbook or physical workbook? Was it mailed to the home? W what am I supposed to write? And how long do I have for this exercise? So when you know that you're going to be doing those things in advance and you can pre-write those rules of the road in into that Google, shared Google Doc that all the chat moderators have access to, it can be a live, living, breathing document that you can adjust on the fly. I love that for events. Then you have any any information about and, and clear and concise, short, direct about workbooking, journaling, and have that ready. The next thing in the rules of the road kind of category is if there's going to be a contest or if there's going to be voting, I want you to share instructions, rules, how to participate, when it starts, when it ends, the link, how many entries they get. You wouldn't believe, <laughs> especially when we start working with these larger volumes of guests inside a virtual event, how quickly people can pile on when one person asks a question to clarify and then everyone else is like, oh, I have that question too, or I'm wondering too. And then it just seems like things are out of control and off the rails when they're really not. It's just this like piling on that's happening. And so I want you to nip that in the bud by being cl clear in advance of, hey, we are going to run this contest or we are going to open this thing up to vote. And so let's let's write down those instructions, those rules, how to participate, timing, number of entries, when it starts, when it ends, the link, put it in the Google Doc, clear, concise, direct, so it can be copied and pasted into the chat. And bonus points, <laughs> if I could send you a virtual cookie, I would use emojis because those definitely are not used very much by general guests in at a virtual event, but they're easy to pre, pre-write into a... I'm just going to say Google Doc again, whatever, use whatever shared um, word processing platform that you can, you can't, you want during an event. But I love having the, the Chrome extension in my browser so I can just get those, use those emojis whenever I want and putting those into that shared Google Doc for your chat moderators to kind of spice up and really highlight when they've shared something is a really good thing. And then last in the rules of the road section is breakouts. So anytime that you are going to do a breakout, I want you to share who goes first, who is the timekeeper, what to say, or what questions to answer, and how much time is per person. So put those, the same stuff that would be on a slide in the PowerPoint, I want you to have to be able to put into the chat so that, again, we're kind of nipping all of that extra chatter, unnecessary chatter in the bud, having the information come from the source, your chat moderator, right there in a timely fashion. And that's another reason why having it all pre-written is a great idea because it allows your chat moderators to be timely. All right, next one is... I call this category end strong. Any time that you're wrapping up a session or even even the event itself, I want you to pre-write the call to action so that the chat moderator can just copy and paste when the time is right. Really end things on a high note with exactly what each guest should do next. Love that one. End strong. Last one we're going to talk about today is how to end and redirect off-topic conversations. You've heard me say it many times today already that people, it's easy for chat to get out of control, for people to pile on when one person asks a question and then everyone comes on and says, oh, me too, or I, yeah, I have the same question. So aside from constantly saying, all right, let's stay on topic or 
let's um, let's kind of quiet in the chat and you can have different versions of that pre-written for your chat moderator to, to copy and paste into the chat. Uh, monitor the chat for distracting conversations that really should be held elsewhere. And maybe they are a fabulous conversation, but it's just not on topic and for what's happening right now. And if that's the case, have something written in a way that sounds like it's from, you know, in your voice, in your brand, something to the effect of let's stay on topic. You can connect on that topic or with each other here. And then you have the link to your community. And I love that redirect. It's not like totally shutting people down, but you're just saying the appropriate place for that conversation is over here. Or if people are starting to try and share contact information in the chat, it's just hugely distracting and and, and inappropriate because it doesn't, um, it's just, it's distracting to the, the speaker at, at hand. And also probably not the, the fairest way to be exchanging contact information. So directing those people to a place where that is the appropriate venue for that and your community. So whether that's your circle community or your Facebook community, wherever it is, having that link ready so that you can be constantly calling out, hey, if you want to connect with each other one-on-one, the community is a great place to do that. Access it here. And on that note, (laughs) the Lynchpin Nation community is a fabulous spot for you to be connecting with each other, with like-minded business owners who are using events to scale their businesses. That's over at lynchpinnation.com, lynchpinnation.com. Now, today we covered four things. First, how to personalize your chat moderators and brand them. Second, the rules of the road for workbook and journaling, for contests and voting, and for breakouts. We talked about ending strong, and we talked about how to end and redirect off-topic conversations. I hope this has been helpful. Again, go back and listen to episode 24, Chat Moderation, What You Need to Know, for additional tips. I will link to that in the show notes for this episode. If additional questions come up for you, don't hesitate to drop me a DM over on Instagram and I will help you answer that question or brainstorm if that's what you need. Take care and make it an outstanding rest of the week. Thank you for listening to the Green Room Central podcast. If you love this episode on advanced chat moderation strategies, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it to Instagram and be sure to tag at Sarah Faber and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear or who you'd like to hear from in the future. That'll help me know what to create for you. Also, if it's on your heart to host your first or next event in 2023 and you need a jump start, then let's you and I connect on a strategy session. Just go to greenroomcentral.com in a two hour intensive private session. I can help you pivot, scale, or start your event vision from scratch. Together, you and I will build an actionable plan so that you feel confident and clear on your next steps. Go to greenroomcentral.com right now to sign up. This podcast is built on Kajabi. I loved how easy it was to get things set up, but more so, I'm thrilled that my entire business is run within one platform, from my emails to my pages to my courses and my podcast too. It's all under one roof. If you love simplicity and scalability as much as I do, then go to greenroomcentral.com to get a free 14-day trial from Kajabi. I appreciate your commitment to leveling up and learning the mindset and strategy of live events. Keep going. Keep learning. If you want more, head over to greenroomcentral.com for show notes and all the links from today's episode.